Day two at SNA 2023. Today we're focusing on weapon systems, starting with Tomahawk and NSM with Raytheon and Kongsberg. And then we're looking at counter UAS with BA systems. Octavio, good morning. Thanks for welcoming us on your Raytheon booth here at SNA 2023. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you for having me. So, Octavio, what's the latest with the Tomahawk program? So the Tomahawk program uh, is currently in production and a recertification program uh, in the Block 5 family and additionally in development for new configurations, 5A and a 5B configuration. So Tomahawk Block 5 is a modernization program uh, to relieve some obsolescence issues. Uh, and that is part of new production. And the recertification aspect of that program is to bring in older uh, Tomahawk configurations and modernize them to a Block 5 configuration. And uh, there are like two sub-variants, 5A and 5B? Right, good question. On the um, Tomahawk Block 5A configuration, so it's uh, development uh, for a new seeker that will provide a mission aspect uh, for targets at sea. And the Tomahawk Block 5B configuration is a new multiple effects uh, warhead that's in development to give additional capability to Tomahawk. And uh, I, I believe uh Tomahawk Block 5 was uh, successfully tested about two years ago from uh, USS Shafi, the Early Bird Destroyer. Uh, now moving on to Naval Strike Missile. Uh, it's been 2022, it's been a, a busy year. What's, what's the latest for NSM here in, in the US? Well, as you're aware on Naval Strike Missile, we were awarded our initial contract in 2018 for over the horizon program for LCS, bringing that NSM capability to the LCS fleet. We continue to uh, deliver and execute to the contract in accordance with the Navy plan. And we are looking forward to the second phase of that uh, over the horizon program with the new ship build class of the Constellation frigates. So that has a requirement for NSM capability as well. And looking forward at uh, defense budget documents, we see that commitment to continue uh, with NSM. The end of 2022 saw an award from the U.S. government as part of a U.S.-Romania FMS case. Uh, Raytheon received the award just as we were ending the year, uh, so we will provide NSM capability as part of that contract to Romania in a coastal defense role. So that means uh, truck-launched uh, NSMs? There are examples of coastal defense that are in existence, and I'll point to uh, the Polish uh, land forces that have that, that NSM capability. So it will be similar. NSM is by design uh, open to a variety of launch platforms, so certainly that's one, one aspect that's in consideration. And, uh, so speaking of which, uh, what about the, the future of NSM here in the US? Like you mentioned, NSM can be fitted on various launch platforms. Can we expect the missile to be uh, fitted on other classes of ships or other uh, systems or launch platforms? From a Raytheon perspective, NSM is very well suited to a variety of, of launch platforms to include naval, land and air. So certainly we are looking for opportunities, continue to look for opportunities to leverage an existing naval capability in the U.S. Uh, and grow it past that and continue that growth into the international. Absolutely. All right, Octavio, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Again. And let's now uh, meet with uh, Kongsberg uh, to discuss uh, the various uh, successes for NSM on the uh, international market uh, in 2022. We're now with uh, Gary Holtz, uh, Senior Director, Surface Naval Warfare at uh, Kongsberg. 
Gary, good morning. Thanks for welcoming us on your booth. Good morning, Xavier. Good to see you again. Great to see you as well. So 2022 has been a tremendous year for Kongsberg with uh, a number of navies, uh, mainly in Europe, uh, selecting the NSM. Uh, can you remind our audience uh, which uh, countries those were? Certainly. Um, the 2022, like you said, was a banner year. So we started uh, fairly late in the year, around the September time frame, Spain announced that they are interested for their Aegis frigates in replacing the system there. So uh, they've selected NSM. And then they were followed in a fairly rapid succession. We went from Spain, uh, the UK was the next to announce to replace uh, in their Type 23 and Type 45 destroyers. Um, the Netherlands has announced, uh, Australia announced for their Hobart and Anzac class. And the Netherlands, uh, I skipped quickly over them, but they're going in their air defense uh, ships as well, air defense and command with an option to install it in their ASW ships later on as well. And then finally, Romania uh, bought at the end of the year, uh, actually it was just announced earlier in this year, but uh, they made their decision at the end of the year and announced here in early 23 to uh, pursue a coastal defense system, which will be a first foreign military sale of NSM uh, through the U.S. In your opinion, what drives all these uh, successes? Oh, I, I'm biased, of course, but it's a tremendous capability. Uh, the weapon has autonomous target recognition. It takes extraordinary measures, both technically and tactically, or in its employment to avoid detection. Uh, its ability to evade defenses uh, in the end game is tremendously important. So a lot of navies are recognizing the great capability that it brings. We saw many NATO navies uh, selecting NSM. Is, is there still room for growth for Kongsberg? There's always room for growth. Uh, Kongsberg has launched an initiative to establish uh, another production facility um, that's moving along nicely and will be online uh, in another year or two. Um, but we really need to do that in order to meet the demand. And additionally, uh, there's a tremendous production uh, capability in the U.S. as well. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Good to see you. We're now on the BAE Systems both at SNA 2023 with Nate Carlson, Program Director for Naval Gun Systems at BAE Systems. So Nate, good afternoon, thanks for welcoming us. You're showcasing here the, the, the Mark 110, the 3PE ammunition and the Mark 38, which are well-known systems. Uh, what is new though is uh, how do you counter the UAS threats? Yeah, that, that's correct. Um, we're highlighting the capability of the Mark 110, specifically with the 3P ammunition, which offers pre-fragmented, programmable, and proximity fused options with six fusing uh, options to select from. And then on the Mark 38, one of the recent developments is our counter UAS uh, capability that is fielded and continuing to be fielded. Um, we offer uh, improvements to the electro-optical system for tracking, and then we've also added a coax cannon uh, that augments the 25 millimeter main cannon with a 7.62 coaxial cannon. So if I got that right, uh, Mark 110 in conjunction with the 3P ammunition can already address uh, a counter UAS stress, whereas the Mark, Mark 48, you're you improve the system in order to counter those threats. That's correct. Mark 110 inherently had that ability from day one. We've now fielded 53 systems, and we continue to field those on littoral combat ships, um, the National Security Cutter, the Offshore Patrol Cutter, and then the future U.S. Navy Constellation class. And so that advanced ammunition really does some wondrous things. The gun fires at 220 rounds per minute, the ammunition includes um, a warhead that, uh, in, that includes thousands of tungsten pellets to kind of create a wall of defense. Uh, going back to Mark 48, uh, are you working on any other uh, type of evolutions for the system? Um, we don't su supply the ammunition itself for, for the 25 millimeter gun, um, but we're constantly looking at how we can help the U.S. Navy with emerging threats 
Um, CUAS was one of those, and we're continuing to innovate and and util and to tr so the U.S. Navy can take advantage of the wide footprint of gun systems in the U.S. Navy. There are over 380 systems fielded for the U.S. Navy, and that's that's a massive uh, footprint, and we. Uh, offer uh, somewhat modular upgrades for those systems. All right, Nate, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.